The next phytohormone that we are starting with is gibberellic acid. And it is written as GA, gibberellic acid. We have seen that these are derivatives of terpenes. Now the story behind the discovery of uh, gibberellic acid is uh, very interesting. The farmers in Japan, they observed that ri some rice seedlings or few rice seedlings grew exceptionally tall. The normal height of rice seedling or the rice plant is around three to four, four and a half feet. But these plants, they grew very, very tall up to 12, 15 feet. And we know the rice plant has a thin stem. So that thin stem was not able to hold that uh, tall plant. So they fell flat on the ground. These farmers called these seedlings by a term which is in their language that is bacchene, bacchene disease. They said that these exceptionally tall plants were suffering from bacchene disease. Now if we translate this bacchene, it means it means foolish seedlings. So they meant that these seedlings, which normally should have attained the height of three to four feet, they grew exceptionally tall. So their behavior was foolish. And in their language, that word is bacchene. So they called it bacchene disease, which actually means a foolish seedling disease. Scientist Kurosawa observed these plants and found out that these rice seedlings, which were exceptionally tall, which grew very, very tall, were infected by a fungus. And when the fungus was found out, that fungus was Gibberella fugicorai. That is the name of the fungus. And so they called the active chemical which was responsible for this different behavior of the plant was called gibberellin. So the chemical, that is the active substance, was called gibberlin. And later on it was found out that those chemicals were gibberlic acids. And that is why we write GA or gibberlic acid. Up till now, hundreds of gibberlic acids or gibberlins have been isolated. So hundreds of GAs have been isolated. But the uh, one which is amongst the first ones and has been studied the maximum is GA3. And this is how they are written, GA1, GA2, GA3 and so on. So this is the one which was one of the first isolated ones and maximum studied. So, one of the first isolated and maximum studied. Maximum studied means the effect of this GA3 has been studied the maximum. So its discovery, discovery of gibberlins goes back to that observation which was made by the farmers in Japan and later on when these plants were studied, it was found out that they were infected by a fungus. The fungus was found out to be Gibberella fugicola. Kurosawa found out that there was an active chemical which was responsible for this kind of behavior 
of these rice plants. That chemical was called gibberlin and later on it was found out to be gibberlic acid. Now let us talk about the functions of gibberlin and then say how we can use those functions for our benefit that is under applications. Let us talk about the functions now. The first and the one of the most important functions of gibberlins is it helps or promotes elongation of stem. So it promotes stem elongation. And this can also be written as axis elongation. Once we are done with the functions, we will see how we can use it for various uh, improvements. The second function is it promotes malting process. Third function, it delays senescence. Senescence is the term given to aging in plants. Aging in plants is known as senescence. So it delays it. That means it is going to keep it younger for a longer period of time. Then it hastens or increases the process of seed maturity. Increases the seed maturity. And one more function which we talk of is known as bolting. It causes bolting in russet plants. Bolting is basically internodal elongation. To understand bolting, let us uh, take an example. And these plants, which are russet plants, they have very short, compact internodes, or we can say that the leaves are very, very close. The example of russet plant is beet, a uh, root plant, and cabbage. These are called russet plants. So now when we see, uh, this is what we are talking about here, that is the bolting thing. So if we draw the axis of cabbage, cabbage is like the bud, terminal bud, where the leaves are compactly arranged. And these are the leaves which are compactly arranged and that is how we get this cabbage. We know that the leaves arise from nodes. So this is a section showing all those leaves of cabbage. Now if we point out this, this is the place from where the leaf is arising. That means this is a node. This is another place from where the leaf is arising. So this is one node and this is another node. The gap between the two, that is internode, is very, very short. And such plants which have extremely compact internodes are known as russet plants. If these plants are injected with gibberlic acid or gibberlin, then internodal elongation would take place. And that would result into this axis becoming very long due to internodal elongation. So this becomes one node and here comes the next node. And the leaves, they arise from the nodes. So one leaf would be from here, the second leaf from, would be from here, and so on. So the cabbage is going to become very, very big. And the gap between the leaves or the internode is going to become very, very long. Such a change is known as bolting. It is called bolting. But that is observed best in russet plants because they have short internodes. If we try this in a plant which already has long internodes, there would be increase, but that will not become very obvious or clearly visible. So these are some important functions which are performed by gibberlic acid. Now using these, let us see the applications. Where can we use this? 
first is promotes stem elongation or uh, axis elongation. This can be used to increase the length of grapes. When, so we can write increase or elongation of grape axis. Grapes, when these fruits grow, we know these are the fruits which are growing and here are branches and this is how these fruits grow. Many a times we find that these fruits are very close to each other and due to contact either there is some kind of a scar or damage which is caused to the fruit or the size remains smaller. If by treating with gibberellic acid this axis becomes very long and the fruits would be properly spaced. One, the size would be more and secondly, the fruits would also grow at a distance. Second, the grape vine, the plant, they grow in the soil and then we help them climb up and the fruits grow at the top. So, the stem elongation will also take place at a very fast pace. So immediately the stem would become tall and you would be able to place it on that frame on which we grow the grape vines. So not only this, also for stem elongation. This is one. Same property or same function of gibberellin can also be used to get longer, taller, uh, sugar canes. So to increase the height of sugar cane. Sugar cane is the stem and we said it helps in stem elongation. So if and in sugar cane the sucrose uh, is stored in the stem so if the stem gets taller or longer it would have more sugar content stored in it. So we can get taller sugar cane plants. The same property can also be used to increase the length of the apple fruit. So, elongation of apple fruit. And that would help in the shape uh, correction. Many a times the apples are slightly smaller. And if gibberellic acid is uh, injected in such plants, the apples would become taller, longer, and obviously it would fetch more price uh, for the farmers. So all three applications come from the same function that is, it promotes stem elongation. Now, it promotes malting process, and that is why it can be used in brewing industry. So, can be used in brewing industry. In brewing industry where malting has to take place and then alcohol uh, formation or fermentation process takes place. And gibberellic acid can be used in that. Delays senescence. That means it will delay the aging process. So, if gibberellic acid is used on fruiting plants, those fruits would remain young for a longer period of time on the plants so that when the farmers are plucking those fruits and selling it in the market, that can be done in batches. If all the fruits ripen at an early age or earlier, the farmer has to take off all those fruits and sell them in a short period of time. But as they grow older or as they mature slowly, the farmers or these people would be able to get those fruits in batches. So that would be another application that using gibberellin, the fruits can be left on the plant for longer period of time. So that the ripening and over ripening processes can be avoided. It increases seed maturity. That means 
after treating with gibberellic acid, the seeds would immediately germinate. So next function we can write here, sixth function or application, that it can promote seed germination. Promote seed germination. Because the seeds are going to mature at a faster pace. And molding we have already understood. So these are the properties or functions of gibberellic acid and using the same functions we are using them for our benefit and that comes under application. Similar thing we have done in case of oxygen also and now this is gibberellic acid. So in the next video we will talk about the next pipeline.